menyampaikan beberapa maklumat berkaitan penyertaan siri syarahan Melayu Tanjung Malaysia ini khas kepada staf Universiti Sains Malaysia yang ingin mendapatkan mata MyCPD anda diminta untuk memuat turun aplikasi pasport USM melalui Play Store telefon pintar anda dan perlu mengimbas kod QR menggunakan pasport USM masing-masing kod QR tersebut akan dipaparkan pada skrin dan pautan kod QR juga akan disertakan di ruangan komen pada hujung program nanti manakala bagi semua peserta terutamanya pelajar USM dan masyarakat umum yang berminat dan turut menyertai siri ini anda juga diminta untuk mengisi satu borang maklum balas yang akan disertakan di ruangan komen ini pada hujung program nanti bagi tujuan pemberian mata my CSD dan juga email penyertaan diharapkan juga agar maklum balas tersebut dapat membantu kami memperbaiki lagi mutu program siri syarahan yang akan datang sebarang persoalan berkaitan tajuk siri syarahan pada hari ini pada para hadirin boleh bertanya di ruangan komen page perpustakaan Hamzah Sendut moderator akan mengajukannya kepada panel jemputan untuk menjawabnya nanti para hadirin juga boleh melayari pameran secara dalam talian melalui pautan yang akan kami sertakan di ruangan komen Hadirin hadirat sekalian, selamat datang ke program siri syarahan Melayu Tanjung Meliasana Jalur Rempah dan Melayu Tanjung Sejarah dan Ekspresi. Tajuk syarahan hari ini ialah Upbringing and Personality, The Social Cultural Environment and Jawi Peranakan Characteristics. Sebelum bermulanya program ini, sama-sama kita saksikan video montage yang telah disediakan terlebih Alhamdulillah telah selesai tayangan video montaj yang memaparkan latar belakang dan budaya Melayu Tanjung. Hadirin sekalian, untuk seri syarahan kali ini, panel akan mengupas mengenai personaliti dan karakter Jawi peranakan di dalam pergaulan dan budaya di Tanjung. Seterusnya, sebelum siri bicara berdimulakan, izinkan saya membaca serba sedikit tentang biodata ringkas moderator yang juga merupakan convener bagi projek Melayu Tanjung Malaysia. Untuk makluman semua, Profesor Datuk Dr. Ahmad Murad Merikan ialah Profesor Sejarah Sosial dan Intelektual Institut Pemikiran dan Tamadun Islam Universiti Islam Antarabangsa Malaysia. Beliau juga merupakan fellow kanan Center for Southeast Asia Research dan NHUB di La Salle University Manila. Beliau pernah menjawat Profesor kunjungan di Universiti Sains Malaysia. Beliau merupakan Presiden Persatuan Pengajar Kewartawanan Malaysia Naik Presiden Persatuan Komunikasi Asia Pasifik dan Ahli Sumber Hidup Persatuan Sejarah Malaysia. Beliau banyak ditemubual oleh media kebangsaan dan antarabangsa. Beliau merupakan penulis esei dan kolumnis untuk New Street Times Melaka hari ini, Berita Harian, Putusan Malaysia, Dewan Masyarakat, Dewan Budaya dan Dewan Sastra. Beliau telah menulis sebanyak 17 buah buku mengenai kajian kewartawanan dan media, kajian budaya, sejarah sosial dan intelektual. Antara buku awal beliau ialah Batu Uban Sejarah Awal Pulau Pinang 2015, In Other Words, Ideas on Journalism, Social Science and Society 2017, Views from Pulau Pinang, Country Modern Orientalism and Policy Perspectives, penulis bersama 2018, 
revisiting Atas Angin, a review of the Malay imagination of Ram, Feringi and the Penjajah 2015, Batu Uban, Tanjung dan Bagan, Pengkisahan Lisan, Editor 2020. Tanpa melengahkan masa, saya serahkan majlis kepada Tuan Moderator kita yang akan mengendalikan siri syarahan hari ini. Dipersilakan Profesor Datuk Dr. Ahmad Murad Merikan. Terima kasih. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome to our fifth lecture, syarahan kelima, Projek Melayu Tanjung Malaysia, organized by the uh, Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization, University Islam Mata Bangsa, uh, University of Science Malaysia, and uh, the public group uh, Ikhwan Jawi Pekan uh, on Facebook. So this is a collaboration uh, between three parties uh, to uh, develop uh, a consciousness uh, of the Melayu Tanjung community, uh, which uh, we have defined uh, as uh, people who live in Tanjung, uh, Malay Muslims, uh, over, over, the, over the centuries. Uh, today, we are fortunate to have uh, Datuk Halimah Muhammad Said, uh, someone whom I know for, I think, more than 20 years, initially through her writings. Uh, and uh, I think I have responded to some uh, publicly, and I've read most of her books uh, on the, the subject of uh, Jari Penakan, Jari Pekan, uh, and on the Penang Malays. Uh, and uh, we appreciate uh, Datuk Halima for taking time off uh, for today. She drove uh, from KL uh, to be with us uh, to uh, to commemorate uh, the uh, diversity <coughs> of uh, the population uh, in the Tanjung uh, in, in Pulau Pinang. The title of uh, uh, Datuk Halima's uh, uh, talk uh, will be upbringing and personality, the social cultural environment, and Jawi Pranakan characteristics. Uh, I have uh, uh, many times uh, uh, deliberated with Dr. Alima on the, uh, the 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 character of uh, the individual and collective character of uh, the people that we call Jawi Pranakan, also Jawi Pekan. Right? Uh, there are some differences, but there are also similarities. And uh, Datuk Halima is part of the family, part of the uh, Jayu Pranakan family. She is, she is uh, uh, she has intimate uh, knowledge of uh, uh, the Jayu Pranakan community, and uh, she has written uh, quite a number of works. Uh, that are useful for us to understand the uh, the existence of the Jayu Pranakan community. Uh, I have to say that uh, the consciousness of the Jayu Pranakan community in Malaysia has been around the, the resurgence of it. Uh, uh, the discourse, I think, began in the 1990s. Earlier, yes, uh, uh, when we know in, in popular culture, we know in the family. Uh, I know uh, the, the term Jawi Pekan from my mother about 50 years back, uh, who would uh, know, first describe my father as a Jawi Pekan. Then only I know, okay, my father is Jawi Pekan, and that was uh, 50 years ago. And from there, uh, things are silent. But I, I, I noticed that in the 90s, especially uh, those. Uh, uh, Diaspora from uh, in, in Kuala Lumpur, the Klang Valley, uh, they began to have a certain uh, consciousness and, and to, to, to get themselves uh, visible and, and uh, think of themselves as different from other Malays. So the Jawi, Jawi Pernakan uh, uh, community, and I would put that as a subset of Melayu Tanjung, is another way of looking at the Malay. Uh, socially, Melayu Tanjung and Malays, like Melayu Kelantan, Melayu Johor, but these are different Malays. And I think we need to manage and we need to discuss and discuss the, the micro-diversity, which uh, yesterday we had uh, a talk by Zakari Bashir, I think the sixth generation uh, descendant of uh, Sheikh Omar Bashir, and, and he manifested this micro-diversity and the evolution. It's not just you know uh, uh, one set of characteristics that, that will stay. They involve the, their, their interactions over time within within the family, 
uh, within the extended family and also external to it. Uh, today also, I, I notice uh, we have uh, quite a distinguished uh, audience. Uh, we are honored to have uh, uh, you know, uh, scholars like Professor Wazir Jahan Karim. Uh, she is uh, she has done much work on the uh, Malay uh, Muslim society in, in Pulau Pinang. Uh, I've read many of her works. Uh, we have uh, Datuk Raza, uh, and uh, we have uh, Tuntu Widawra, Cik uh, Ahmad Shari, uh, Professor uh, Hajar. Uh, thank you for coming, uh, and thank you for being with us. This is a, a, a casual conversation. This is the idea, the idea of, of establishing this uh, project. Uh, and the lectures are, are one of the programs. There will be a number of other programs, uh, exhibitions. We have a, a small virtual exhibition on uh, Tanjung Malay newspapers from the 1900s to the World War II. Uh, we're going to have a number of other exhibitions. We're going to have forums. Uh, what is important here is that we curate the materials and 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 uh, and, and the knowledge about uh, Jai Pekan. Yeah, we have Professor Gauss Nasarin. Uh, Old friend. Uh, let me spell out before I introduce uh, uh, Dr. Alima. Yeah, be patient. Uh, I, I want to spell out the objectives uh, so that uh, I think uh, you know, we, we can uh, do our part in responding to this. One is to promote a continuous consciousness. I use the word consciousness because uh, when, when, when we ask the, the, the Melayu Tanjung, uh, I've, I've done some quick surveys you know, uh, by introducing the term Jaya uh, Jaya They don't know. Some have not heard. Some are not sure. But many would say that yeah, they are Malay, regardless of whatever they are called. Meaning to say that uh, my, my take is that uh, it, it's more of a, a social consciousness, a collective consciousness. A person would not say that he or she is Jaya publicly. Perhaps now, perhaps over the last 10 years. But early on, no. I mean, it's there in official documents uh, until 1930. You know, uh, in the IC and uh, birth certificate, uh, Jai Pekan or Jai Pekan, no? my uncles would have that. Those born before 1930, I think. So it's to promote a continuous consciousness on the social identity of Melayu, Tanjung, uh, Jai Pekan, Jai Pekan in Pulau Pinang. Uh, to capture and curate the wealth of histories and expressions in Tanjung, especially between the late 1800s and World War II. Especially when I look at, at uh, intellectual history, at uh, uh, history of newspapers, at uh, literature. Uh, there's, there's a rich uh, uh, episode that we have not explored and we have not uh, bring out. Three, to create a cultural literacy for Pulau Pinang and the nation and the region on the ethnography of Tanjung. Uh, this will be the territory of uh, Professor Wazir. I also, uh, uh, my, my uh, fourth objective is my, my, uh, my, my aspiration is to establish uh, a museum on the, the cultural and journalistic expression of, uh, in Pulau Pinang, a uh, newspaper and periodicals museum. Also, uh, uh, based on the uh, second lecture, uh, Dr. Muhammad Khalid, uh, to uh, uh, set up perhaps a, a, a wakaf uh, archival information center, not an arch not the ones that we have, but some a center uh, where people can seek information about uh, archives in, uh, about wakafs in Penang. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Halima, uh, as as we know, is a long-serving educationist and academician, specializing in English language and literature, ELT, linguistics, translation, and interpretation. I first know her as a uh, 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 as a writer and a scholar of uh, uh, the Penang, uh, Penang Malay community, and I've read her, I've really consumed her book on the Jawi Pekan, Images of Jawi Pekan, uh, written with Zainab Majid, uh, and I, I'm still using the book now. She taught uh, these subjects in schools and universities for 32 years. Upon retirement from Mr. Malaya in 2000, she became a writer and citizen journalist. That's how you call it. 
uh, regularly contributing uh, analytical opinion pieces on issues of national concern in print and online media. Uh, Dato' Halima has written and edited many works, including English uh, is an Asian Language, uh, 2000, Language of Empowerment, 2003, My Early Years, Dr. Muhammad Said, uh, 2011, Memories of Our Mothers, uh, 2012. Uh, she co-authored the book Images of Jayapakan, uh, of Penang, Jayapanakan of Penang, sorry, uh, 2004, published by uh, UCB Kastan Idris and contributed chapters to Memories of Our Mother, 2012, Visions for Peace, 2016, History for Nation Building, 2018, this, this one, one I, I, I've read, I have read, read, read nine times. Change, a World for Change and Empowerment, 2020. Uh, reflections, uh, Dr. Mohamed Said, 2021. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I have reviewed this, uh, this work uh, in, in my column. Uh, Great and Gumption, the latest, I have to show, can I? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a hefty book. Great and Gumption, The Issue of Brothers of Penang. Uh, and the, as you can uh, see, uh, uh, Dato' Alima is, uh, uh, I, I would describe her as a scholar, editor, writer, and a biographer. And this is one of her works on biography. Um, she is currently a language editor of Al Shajarah. Uh, the Journal at East Tech, UIA, and Makassit Institute, New York. Also, I'm collaborating with her now on another book, on a book uh, uh, on the roots. Uh, on roots and heritage. Uh, there will be about 17 writers. Hopefully, inshallah, it will be out this year. So with that, uh, all yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof. Murad, for that you know, lengthy uh, introduction. All right. I think half of what he said about me is not true, or rather, he <laughs> like overemphasized certain things. Tapa, Tapa. I accept it graciously. <laughs> that's right. A, that's the Melayu Tanjung. Huh? That's right. Uh, uh, jadi, terima kasih uh, banyak banyak, Prof Murad, selaku penganjur projek uh, Melayu Tanjung Malaysiana dan moderator tetap, ya, yeah? yeah. Siri Forum Bulanan Melayu Tanjung. Uh, Prof Murad, you have given me the opportunity, beri, beri saya peluang memberi ceramah kali ini juga kepada penganjur ya bersama USM dan ISTEC, Jawatan Kuasa Projek dan staf perpustakaan Hamzah Sendut yang terlibat. Uh, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera kepada semua yang hadir pada petang ini secara fizikal ya di lobi perpustakaan Hamzah Sendut. Dan secara online, menerusi laman Facebook uh, Perpustakaan dan juga Istak TV, yeah. Istak TV, right? Memang sepatutnya seperti um, Prof Murad kata tadi, saya berceramah dari rumah saya sendiri di Kuala Lumpur lebih senang, selesa, tak payah tukar baju. Ia ya, selalu kalau kita berceramah Zoom online, kita betulkan uh, muka aja kan? Uh, yang bawah tu tak kira lah pakai apa kan. Jadi hari ni saya kena dress up sikit. Tapi itu tak menjadi masalah sebab saya dah biasa dengan karakteristik mami Pulau Pinang. Always dressed up when they're out. But when they're at home, they're in a terrible state. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Right. Now, jadi saya membuat keputusan datang ke Penang sebab saya rasa bahawa lebih Uh, elok kita bersemuka uh, khususnya dalam perbincangan selepas persembahan saya nanti. So we are face to face and I'm so happy to get your reaction. Body language is a great thing in communication. I can already assess what you're thinking in your mind. All right, from the way you're sitting and so on and so on. Yeah. Jadi, uh, you know, saya uh, amat Uh, berbesar hati dapat bersemuka dengan JPJP Pulau Pinang yang saya uh, tidak asing daripada hidup saya selama lebih daripada 50 tahun. I've been married for more than 50 years and that's lo how long I've known the community. Right? Uh, jadi, you can say yeah, that I was born 
into the JP family when I got married at 23. But I was born not an innocent baby with a white, a, you know, clean white mind and soul, but I was already tainted 23 years, you know, Idora, of roaming around third college and fourth college. Idora was my, uh, you know, uh, contemporary, yeah, in third college and so on. And we did many things together, including matchmaking, you know, Idora. No, we were match made with different, uh, you know, interested Taruna, but some did not happen. Yeah. Right. So, um, in fact, I refer to myself as an associate mummy because of my long standing association with the community, right? All these years with my husband's family, immediate family, and Kutom. Am I saying that right? Kutom, it must be aspirated, Kutom, right? Or, yeah, the clan, right? As well as very large retinue of friends from and in Penang. Some of you are here this afternoon. Thank you so much for your support. Gauss, Prof Gauss, and uh, Mamuda, where's Anwar, right? Anyway, thank you so much for coming. Right. So as a pendatang, all right, when you're married into something and, and when you're entrapped into something like the migrants, you know, claim to be, you're more aware, you're more sensitive and more aware and therefore more vigilant of the environment and what is happening in the environment. In this case, in my case, the home and socio-cultural community of the Jawi Pranakan uh, kaum, yeah? kaum Jawi Pranakan. Yes, kaum. Linguistically, I, I was actually exposed very early to your value system, you know, and mm -hmm. your biases and prejudices. Because I think during my wedding itself, I was introduced to the the use of this exclusive kito, kita. Actually, kita yes, linguistically is supposed to be in, in inclusive. Yeah, kita semua yeah, ada yeah. di sini. Yeah. But the Jawi brand I can use it exclusively, yeah? and they leave you out of their circle by saying something like, "To me, it was said, kenapa pucat sangat? Kita suka boh bedak lebih sikit." <laughs> that was from my sister-in-law, one of my <laughs> sisters-in-law. Kita meaning excluding me, that was as pale as a, you know a sheet of paper. Suka boh beda lebih sikit. Betul tak? Betul ya? <laughs> Alright. Jadi untuk menjawab soalan yang mungkin timbul dalam minda tuan tuan dan puan puan, mengapa seorang yang bukan orang Tanjung berani berceloteh kata kita? Orang Negeri Sembilan kata berceloteh. Ya, yeah, dan orang Johor. Tapi sembang-sembang kata mereka. Yeah? Tentang sosio budaya dan ciri-ciri pribadi orang Tanjung. Saya ingin mengesyorkan bahawa saya memang sudah matang dalam perkara ini sebab mempunyai pengalaman total immersion. Ya, yeah? right. Iaitu penumpuan yang menyeluruh. Menyeluruh. Total immersion is uh, satu prinsip, ya, yeah? ialah satu prinsip dalam pembelajaran bahasa yang menjamin kefasihan tinggi jika pelajar menguasai persekejaran bahasa dan sosio budaya bahasa sasaran itu dengan sepenuhnya. Total immersion. Uh, kalau ingin menguasai mana-mana bahasa, bahasa kedua atau bahasa ketiga dengan pantas dan efisien, perlu hidup bersama. Tidur bangun, makan, minum dengan penutur asli atau native speaker. Which is what uh, Tunku Idora, you and uh, Datin Zainab did when you went to do uh, French for a year. Yeah, They were totally immersed in French culture and came back speaking French like native French speakers. Three years. Three years. Three years. Three years. Right. 
Jadi uh, this learning, language learning must be done spontaneously in a natural setting. Uh, macam macam kita membesar dengan uh, bahasa ibunda kita. So it's not learning as such but acquisition of the language naturally. Oh sorry, belum lagi, belum. Belum. Right. All right. This is just my introduction, Pramuran. <laughs> All right. Uh, saya ingat masa, um, uh, jadi bila kita menguasai atau men, men, mendalami bahasa itu, kita uh, terdedah kepada bahasa rasmi, bahasa kolokial, logat dan dialek, serta istilah, terma, ungkapan-ungkapan harian, serta ungkapan idiomatik dengan licin, smoothly. So this is my experience. When I lived in England uh, for five years, my husband was posted there to Shell UK. And my family and I, my three children and I lived there for five years. And of course, the English are very polite. They will compliment you about how well you speak their language. But I knew, I was very aware that I was never going to reach the level of the native speakers because I couldn't use their idioms as naturally as they did. I didn't know some of their idioms, all right? Like uh, they would say that the, the day is very, uh, there's a word that they use, you know, to describe a gloomy day, you know, dung, uh, I can't remember, the word begins with a D. So I had to look that word up in the dictionary, but to them it was idiomatic. Uh, bahasa harian. Ya, yeah, jadi um, uh, selain itu, ya, yeah, saya membuat kerja-kerja formal, ya, yeah, seperti um, menulis, seperti Prof uh, Murad kata tadi, menulis makalah dan buku uh, yang menceritakan tentang, um, you know, adat budaya jawi peranakan. The first, uh, sorry, the first uh, upper makalah Publication was this thing that appeared in NST as a double page spread in Life and Times, titled "Indefatigably Mama," the mama that that are unstoppable, indefatigably. And uh, you know, uh, I describe the customs, traditions, the language, their snootiness. At that time, I thought they were snooty. Betul. And condescending, they pass saja yang besar. Kita ni semua kecil-kecil. All right. But having said that, there were outstanding people in the community. And here you have the pictures of Tan Sri Azizan, Tun Azizan, uh, Tan Sri uh, Abu, Abul Hasan, the two American sisters, Farida and Marina, of course, Sharizat my husband's uh, niece, and Sheikh Daud, who was then judge, high court judge. Yeah? So they were outstanding. They were outstanding. You know, in Kuala Lumpur, the mama stood out by sheer association. Tun Mahade himself, you know, was a mama. Right? So, all right. Now, can, can use the slide. Okay. Um, all right. This is the article. All right. By the way, I, I responded to the article through Did a letter it? to the NSC. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I you got the letter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Because Aisha Ali was then the editor. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So I got it. So these are the faces of the important people. Outstanding Jai Bran Khan. Uh, right. Jadi, uh, makalah ini ditulis dalam bahasa yang bersahaja, not academic because it's meant to be read by readers of life and times so very uh, natural language yeah. yeah um right now selama dua tahun pula selepas saya bersara pada tahun 2000 saya dijemput oleh Profesor Asma bos saya di uh, Universiti Melaya untuk menjadi fellow di UPSI saya dan uh, Datin Zainab ya yeah? dan Memang ada tugas untuk kami lah. So, fellow bukan sebarang fellow, mesti keluarkan buku. So, we were given two years to produce this book, this research, and this book on the Jawi Pranakan. 
I think that, that was when, or that was the height of what you stated earlier, yes, yes. there was an arousal of interest. It was triggered by the book American Clan early on, 1996. By Rogaya. By Rogaya. And then yours. But Rogaya American did not write about the Yeah, it's not the Jawi Pranakan. Yeah. She only wrote about her the, own, own family. family, own family. Yeah. But that triggered, uh, that was the, yes. Uh, yes. the interest. Rogaya American was the librarian at Bang Negara, okay? yeah. And she wrote this her book. Husband on her husband's um, family, yeah. Mahmoud Marukan, outstanding family, Malik Marukan, Mahmoud Marukan, yeah. all right? But she dis she did not uh, describe the other... Yeah, yeah, yeah. only her line. The lesser yeah, known the line, uh, yeah. you know, people to her, to yeah. her, yeah? Right. Uh, Jadi, this book was published in 2004, and I think uh, a lot of people referred to it because it was like, like comprehensive, uh, it was, uh, you know, discussing in general the history, the social-cultural uh, heritage uh, and uh, the value system. But I'm most proud of Chapter 5, which is on the mind and personality. Minda dan, uh, minda dan not personality. Yeah, minda dan personality, uh, Jawi Pranakan. Mm -hmm. Because I thought that was something that people had not uh, had not talked about. So Datin uh, Zainab uh, and I, we are not anthropologists, neither are we uh, sociologists. We were just hardcore linguists. But there are aspects of linguistics, sociolinguistics, that deals with society and how people think and the words that they use and so on. So our work is not theoretical, was there? It, in fact, there was one person who banished our work for not being theoretical. And I confronted her. You know, I said, it's really um, not very ethical of you to be saying that about your colleague. I said, I, we explain the basis of our work by saying that it's uh, an ethnographic study of the community. And this an ethnographic study is very frequently used in sociolinguistics. Yeah? Uh, field work, interviews, questionnaires, and so on. That's very uh, you know, regularly used in sociolinguistics. And Prof. Asma herself, who was the, uh, the, the chair or the head of the uh, Pradaban Nwayu in UPSI. Zabache. She herself was a proponent of this field work and what do you call it? Uh, that uh, field work. So she was a proponent of this methodology. So I think she did not have much to say about it, but she approved. All right. Right. So uh, I'm particularly proud of, oh, yeah. forgive yeah. this uh, orang tua, ya? Dah lupa kadang-kadang mana. I letak, wait, 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 not yet. Not yet. All right. Okay. Uh, so the shaping of the mind and personality of the Jawi Pranakan, which I shall go into a bit later. All right. Now, an interesting observation and rather a bold one, I must say, that we made was that the Jawi Pranakan uh, stood out vis-a-vis -vis the other Malay groups. And I think the other Malay groups did not like it. Or rather, you know, that maybe they were motivated by it in the 60s, in the mid-60s. They were motivated, yeah, to actually run the same mile as the Jawi Pranakan. Right. So the Jawi Pranakan was found to be, all right, having a more dynamic personality than the Malays of other ancestries, the, the Minangkabau, the Achenese, and the Bugis, which I am, uh, uh, you know, part of, right? Uh, they are generally more confident and outspoken. There are other words to describe that characteristic. characteristic. Yeah, brash and bold, not so nice words, but I think confident is a good word. Outspoken is okay, 
You can be outspoken in a nice way. Sometimes arrogant. Arrogant is a bad word. It's a negative yeah, word. But it is uh, to describe. It is a characteristic. Actually, yeah. <laughs> and three. And three. Thank you for coming, yeah. Tansri. Tansri is relative, yeah. Tansri is relative. Yeah. How was it, Tansri? No. <laughs> so, Depa, Depa ni, yakin <laughs> dan berani. Kita ni, Melayu biasa ni, segan dan malu. Always malu, segan. Segan not in the Jawi Pranakan sense of malas. Segan means like shy, timid. Yeah, whereas in uh, Jau Jawi Pranakan dialect, when you say penyegan, bermakna pemalas. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> All right. yeah. okay, now slide five and six. Okay. <clears throat> Not sure which one now. Tak apalah. Right. Jawi Peranakan, sebelum itu Jawi Pekan. I think Jawi Pekan was the term uh, earlier, the uh, earlier term. Ago. But when Jawi Peranakan was used by the British, they included the people of Arab ancestry in the later census, yeah. Yeah. which they did not like, you know. They did not like to be lumped together with people of Indian Muslim ancestry because they thought they were, or they still think they are very special, yeah? Keturunan Nabi and all that. Not so pedestrian. Pedestrian. Right. So, Terma ni, Terma Jawi Peranakan ni direka oleh British, yeah? yeah? Uh, kacukan ni tak? Peranakan, yeah. kacukan. Kacukan, kacukan. Yeah, so you have Chinese Peranak, Peranakan. Uh, tetapi secara informal, Dan tidak rasmi, kumpulan ini dirujuk sebagai mama. This is controversial, yeah? Uh, Prof. Wazir, we shall enter into this con controversy later. Yeah. All right? Because uh, Z Puan Zainab and I made several definitions or came up with several definitions in our book, yes, yes. which you all may not agree with, yeah? yeah. So, mama ini dipersepsi oleh kumpulan Melayu lain sebagai mempunyai ciri-ciri personality yang negatif sikit. Ya? Yeah? Uh, mereka dianggapkan sebagai bold, arrogant, ya, yeah, berani. Ya? Yeah? Berani apa? Berani buka kedai, berani buat business at that time because that was their field of uh, work. Yeah? A lot of them were businessmen, kedai runcit, bagi pinjam duit ke orang. Ya? Yeah? Garang. Garang, pukul bini, selalu bergaduh. Pukul bini itu is a, a perception, you know. I don't know where it came from, but it was a very common perception, mama pukul bini. In Tanjung? Perception in Tanjung? No, uh. in tempat saya. Oh, okay. Uh, in the southern, <laughs> in the southern okay. states. Mama kalau pukul bini. All right? So I'll tell you an anecdote in a short while. <laughs> Cakap besar, ya. Yeah? Kasyakat besar tu betul lah, because they're loud, they're influenced by their Indian, the Indian languages, yeah? So they speak in a very loud manner, so they look as though they were like, cakap besar. Tapi because they were holding good positions as Karani, British, translator, interpreter, surveyor, and so on in the British administration. So dia pun ada rasa bongkak tu kot, eh? Ada rasa bongkak dan proud. Nowadays, bongkak is not a bad word, you know. What if you're confident? I think it's a good trait. But orang dulu-dulu tahulah, kalau kita ni malu segan, orang yang lebih sikit pada kita, kita anggap sebagai bongkak. Jealous lah sikit, kan? Alright. So, dan juga, ya, mereka duduk di kawasan pekan. Dan bersaing dengan orang Cina, bersaing dengan kaum-kaum lain. So, mereka membina, you know, uh, personality yang boleh bersaing. Tahan, lasak dan boleh bersaing. Uh, boleh, tapi uh, uh, boleh dikatakan pada masa dulu ada stigma atau prejudis terhadap mamak. 
you know, this is an anecdote which I always relate, but it is, I think, quite, it hits the nail on the head. When I was Dilamarkan Olizade, my husband, the whole family was astir. Although he was very handsome, was he? But they were so scared because mama, mama, dada tang, you know? And my father, <laughs> my father confided in my mother, Kesian Bon, Bon is my, my home name. Kesian Bon nak kahwin dengan mama. <laughs> so, and then I, I was undeterred, of course. I wanted a handsome husband. So I was undeterred. But on the day of the nikah, on the afternoon of the nikah, you know, my sisters and I were in our little room in the house. My father had, had just retired, you know. So we moved back into this, uh, you know, smaller house, you know, family style house. And there were louvers. So from the bridal room, we could see the people coming in, the guests, you know. So my father snooped around and peeked through the louvered windows. And he said, oh, kupu kupu dah datang, kupu kupu dah datang. Because mommy said, ma my bakal mother-in-law and her retinue of daughters, daughters-in-law, Chuchu, Sharizat was 14 at that time. They were doled up to the hilt. Beautiful. Yeah, they were beautifully dressed with jewelry and, you know, sangoi, bunga and so on. So that was not the style of Melayu, or Melayu Semban. Or Melayu Negeri Sembilan ni dia ulu sikit. Ulu, all right? So they were all astir and, you know, although, you know, and my sisters ran out of the room and left me all to myself. <laughs> anyway, that was the anecdote, yeah? Right. Now, baru-baru ini pula, back to the um, definitions, yeah? So dalam buku ini, uh, Datin Zainab dengan saya menerusi um, observation dan interview uh, temu temu bual dan we didn't send a questionnaire i don't like questionnaires so it was face to face uh, temu bual and so on we came to the conclusion from the information documents like birth certificates and so on that we could actually define certain categories of ethnic groups you know so we define orang asli melayu jati atau melayu asli all right uh, Jawi Pekan, Jawi Peranakan, India Muslim. As opposed to Jawi Peranakan. India Muslim are the pure-blooded Indians of Muslim, of the Muslim faith. All right? Uh, I think some of the people who are now uh, considered as Jawi Peranakan, mm -hmm. like Munir Majid, Tansi Munir Majid, I think dia punya family, India Muslim. Yeah. Yeah? Abul Hassan, yeah. India Muslim. Because they did not marry Melayu Jati. You see? So a bit dicey there. Some people may be very sensitive about it. Yeah, yeah? Language spoken. Language Kaguma yeah. Tamil. Yeah. So uh, Mama, and then I, we categorize the Mama. Mama as in uh, Mama Kling. Yeah. All right. And then Mama as in Mama Jaroti. Yeah. And then Mama as in the Mama community. Mama as in uncle, yeah. yeah. Uh, kalau kita panggil uh, orang jual roti, tu kata mama, tak satu roti, yeah, something like that. DKK, that, when was dar darah keturunan Kling used? In 19, what context? Late twenties. What context? Uh, the context of uh, the uh, the threats from the immigrants. Right. And also the context between uh, the the contention between the Malays and the Arabs in Johor and Singapore. Johor and Singapore. Yeah. That's where the the, the name the, the, uh, emerged. The idea is to differentiate between the Keturunan Melayu and Keturunan Arab. All right. Because the Malays in uh, Johor, Singapore, do not like the Arab. Do not like Arab leadership. They do not accept that. They'd rather have uh, DKK? Uh, no. They want Malay leadership Melayu. there. But the Malays in Pulau Pinang do not mind, do not mind uh, Arab or DKK leadership, of course. Because they were uh, predominant. As yeah. a group, yeah, okay? and successful, yeah, right. Okay, thank you, Prof Murad, and also cling, cling, cling. Nipon, not the cling karam and so on, but orang cling, cling. The the pinang, cling to is 
Apa? Indian Muslim. Indian Muslim. So the colloquial term is cling. The formal term is India Muslim. Yeah. Right. Uh, jadi ni, kenaan ni buku ni. Now, baru-baru ni pula, baru last month, uh, Tan Sri, we came up with this book. Oh, Prof, can you hold it up, please? This is the latest publication. All right. After all the general uh, assessment, general, uh, you have a copy, Dan Sri. Yeah. Uh, this one is focused on one family. All right. On the A.G. Yusuf and Fatima Mohammed Noor family, there are four sons, four daughters, thirty-two grandchildren. But the book is especially on the brothers, the four brothers, and uh, because. They were outstanding in their professions and careers, and uh, I consider them, or they can be considered as exemplary or as representing the new generation of Jawi Pranak Khan in the from the 60s, mm -hmm. from the 60s. So, if you want to trace their, um, you know, uh, narrative, it should be like late 50s, early 60s onwards until today. The youngest brother, Tan Sri Arifin, is still very much, uh, you know, in the business uh, circle. My husband has sort of retired at 82 plus. His two other brothers, uh, the elder brother, Isha, why am I pointing there, not showing it on the screen? All right. So these are the four brothers, Yusuf brothers. All right. The two brothers uh, on the... Isha and Hussein. It's like the eldest is on the right. Next to him is Hussein, and then Zain, number three, brother number three, and uh, the youngest brother Arifin. So two have passed away, and leaving Zain and Arifin. But the beautiful thing is that in between the brothers, from number one, are the girls. So Isha followed by Chesa followed by Hussein, followed by Cik uh, Rama, dah tak ada, followed by Zain, followed by Cik Wan, followed by Arifin, followed by Rosia. So selang bunga, beautiful, beautiful. You see, but later I shall say that all, uh, they, they, they supported each other because Jarak, uh, you know, um, umur mereka dekat. One year, sometimes 10 bulan dah keluar lagi satu kan. Orang dulu-dulu lah. <laughs> Alright. And then, um, so they were supportive. The parents were supportive of their uh, offspring. And among the children, they were very supportive of one another. Despite the fact that there was gender bias there was outright, not subtle, outright gender bias. Misalnya makan, the brothers got all the best parts of the chicken. This is not unusual, yeah? The boys get the best part of the meat, of the chicken. The girls tunggu kat belakang, the second round, the girls will eat and they will get the bones. That's why my sister-in-law, Cik Rama, arwah Cik Rama, she loved chicken bone and she would she would suck the marrow and really relish in the marrow and she was one of the earliest women to get heart disease and died of a heart uh, attack mm. because of the bone marrow right so uh, you know it's very interesting all right now i shall talk about that in a while now, the Yusuf brothers of Penang, all right, this was out just about a month ago, all right, so it's fresh, all right. Menceritakan kisah empat orang anak lelaki, A.G. Yusuf dan Cik Mahmoden ni, all right. Tapi yang uh, yang menarik adalah uh, the grit and gumption, that's why. This is with Prof Murad. I was consulting with Prof Murad. What title? What title? So we came across, you know, or rather we discussed different titles and so on and different permutation and how to arrange it and so on. And we came up with grit and gumption. 
which describes their personalities quite well. They were bold, brani, gumption, grit, determined, you know, to achieve what they achieve in life. So, uh, in a way, this book, as I said, the objective is not only to document their life, but to also uh, uh, put them in a place where they are seen as exemplary uh, uh, men, not only to be emulated by the Jawi Peranakan, but the, by Malays, other Malays, you know, that, that these brothers were driven in the 1960s, 70s, they were driven to be <coughs> successful. And they were not deterred by failure. That's the other aspect, you know. Mm. Um, you know, they had great failures, you know, in their business. For example, when there was that Great Depression in 86, 87, yeah. you know, Hussein lost a lot of his businesses <coughs> in uh, Kuala Lumpur, all right, and made a decision to uproot and move to Melbourne, you see, where, you know, he had the foresight. Now, satu lagi, dia orang berani, ya, and dia orang ada VC, VC panjang, dia kepanjang. He had the foresight to buy, you read Hussein's chapters, uh, very interesting. I, I think, although I wrote the chapters and invited people to write, I think Hussein's chapters are the most interesting, you see? Because from the, being a vet, veterinary officer, government officer, he looked into abattoir, the abattoir set up the Shah Alam abattoir in Shah Alam, and then um, and then he uh, taught at University of Tanyan, uh, Mara Institute of Technology, which set up a veterinary science uh, a program there. But later it was found out that Mara is not the place for veterinary science. So they moved that program to University, uh, you know, uh, Agriculture, Tanyan, which is now University of Putra, where Tan Sri Said Jalaluddin took over. In fact, Tan Sri Jalaluddin was uh, Hussein's pro, uh, upper course mate in Lahore, uh, Hussein's junior in Lahore, as was uh, Nodin Kling and uh, Dr. Zainal and Mustafa Babji. They were all one group of veterinarians mm -hmm. who did wonders to yeah. set up uh, you know, veterinary science and husbandry yes. in Malaysia. So Hussein's uh, story is very interesting. You see, although he, he, he started business and went into other ventures like development and so on, he never left his first love. He continued export and import of cattle, goats, African goats, and so on. And he set up Dara Beef in Pahang, which his son is now, has now taken over. So he never left that first love of animals and animal husbandry. So Hussein's story is interesting, on top of the fact that he had three wives, beautiful wives, the last being Maria Manado. Siapa tak nak, tak nak <laughs> dengar cerita Maria Manado? Kan? Right? So, but um, I'm writing my, my chapter in that book, oh, Roots, oh, yeah, is yeah. on Maria Manado. <laughs> That's just on her. Yeah, yeah. But in this book, uh, Hussein's wife, Maria Manado, helped him to consolidate his business interests in uh, Australia. She was the force behind Hussein's success in Australia because together with him, she, were, she had business um, uh, instincts because she was doing film and her mm -hmm. first husband, Raza, was a film producer uh, and so on. So she had early business exposure, which she made good in later years as uh, Hussein's wife, all right? So very interesting, very, very interesting story of Hussein, all right? So, um, so the brothers, yeah? Okay, so grit and gumption, all right? So they had the same grit and gumption uh, when they were students here in PFS, yeah, uh, Zain and uh, Datuk Sri Anwar Fazal were schoolmates, all right, as were hmm, schoolmates. In fact, um, Anwar gave me a lot of the photos which are in the book, right? 
So they were all like outstanding. I think, I think it's not I think. I know that it was because there was competition with the other groups, especially the Chinese. So they were competing, besaing, while their fathers besaing dengan China, but businessmen, diorang besaing di sekolah dengan the Chinese students. So they were, you know, like running the mile and they, they won, you know, they won the race very well. Okay, until now, uh, their circle of friends include a lot of Chinese, like Lim Se Chong and so on, kan? Uh, outstanding Chinese. Yeah, right. So that's that. Let's see. Eh, berapa minit lagi? Uh, well, we can have uh, about 10 minutes more. Really? Uh, before questions oh, my and God. Uh, comments All right. and responses. So I just want to say that I, uh, as I told Prof Murad, I wanted to to seem, not to be, but to seem like intellectual and academic. So I did a bit of reading on anthropology, all right, which is not my field at all. But I did a bit of reading and discovered that in anthropology, there was also this development of, uh, you know, field like um, upper two, good job. Right. But there was a marrying of um, anthropology and psychology to determine uh, what factors there are in the environment that influence the shaping of not only individuals in the community, but also the community as a whole. So from the, uh, from the group of uh, individuals within the community, you can deduce certain assumptions about the psyche of the community, right? So uh, from the, um, these are the Yusuf family, all right? All the pictures are superimposed. And then this was Hussein at his nikah. You see, he was the favorite son of the mother. So he's surrounded by the women of that family, of the, the extended family, including Mami Rahma. Mm -hmm. There's Mami Rahma there. Yeah. Cuk Sumarikan. Yeah. Cuk Sumarikan, your sedara. You know? So he was beloved by the women. Hussein was a cute uh, young man, handsome young man. So he was popular with the old ladies, the young ladies, the children, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah? Uh, okay. And he was especially devoted to his mother, and the mother was devoted to him. So there is this, well, Freud would say Oedipus complex, can? when there is this unusual love between mother and son and father and daughter, Freud would have named it Oedipus complex, and yeah. there's something sinister about that. Can? But I think in traditional uh, Jawi Pranakan society, it was looked upon as something so cute the mother doted on the son and the son doted on the mother. Okay? Right. All right. So, uh, so uh, with regard to anthropology again, there was this research into cognitive anthropology and so on, which saw the uh, relationship between factors in the environment and um, the shaping of the personality of the individuals as well as the community as a whole. So there was a, this attempt to characterize ethnic, uh, the ethnic characteristic or the national characteristics such as these. Mm -hmm. Americans are loud, English are reserved. Malays like handouts. Tak lama lagi, we'll have this characteristic attached to our, our name. Yeah? Malays like handouts. Yeah? Malays, dulu Malays are lazy. But now I think the lazy stigma has sort of been uh, banished, has vanished. And now they are sitting around waiting for handouts. And then Jawi Pranakan are brash. Dulu, but now they are confident, right? Migrants are opportunistic. We would say that of the Chinese. But don't, weren't our forefathers the same? 
won the Jawi Prana, uh, India Muslim uh, forefathers also opportunistic? They were. But today we look down on the Chinese and say, oh, Lord, so opportunistic, you know. All right. And then women are emotional. Agreed? Not sure. Not to some extent. But then the modern women are in control. They may show emotion, but they are in control of them. Yeah. Right. All right. So let's skip that part and go down. So back to the brother study. So lelaki jawi peranakan ni, they are seen as a very, um, you know, what is the word? Domineering. Domineering and assertive. I think there are certain members of our family which fit this description very well. Yeah? And they take more than an equal role in the relationship. It's not an equal relationship. Eh? The wives are submissive to, to the husbands. Yeah? But sometimes it's nice because they do the marketing. They pergi pasar. Siapa nak complain kalau husband pergi pasar? Kan? Do you go pergi pasar? Yeah. Uh, see? But, kan? but she will love it. Huh? Oh. You see that's funny. Yeah, like they probably pass <laughs> Nice. Yes. You market, market, you market. Market, market. <laughs> All right, so funny. Okay. Right, let's go down, go down. Oh, oh, my paintings, my paintings. Go up, go up. All right. All right, so these are the four brothers again. So one thing, so I speak of the calf. Uh, religion. Fakto, uh, fakto uh, uh, persekitaran ni luas ya. Now you have persekitaran asas lah, general environment. But within the general uh, environment or primary institution, you have secondary institutions. And agama is considered as a sec secondary institution in anthropology. So the you have the the personality asas yang dibentuk oleh didikan ibu bapa. Yeah, in general. And then you have this secondary institution like Agama uh, dan, uh, coming in to also influence the personality. So uh, I make this observation, and please, I think it's an important observation that I have made. They were very, up to religiously perform their religious duties, you know, and the rituals. The rituals were, you know, they, are, they love rituals, you know. But I am skeptical of the depth of their spirituality. Whether they think about spirituality, because they mouth it. We read, they mouth it. I'm sorry, you know, I might get into hot trouble for saying this. But I think it is true. I'm not, I'm not scared, you know. <clears throat> When we mouth these uh, uh, rituals or when we perform them automatically, sometimes you don't take time to internalize the principles behind it. All right? So sometimes I think that is probably a shortcoming of the way Islam is taught in the country. Too much on rituals, too, too little on you know, the theology and the real the reality of the religion. Too much on giving siddhakah, but little on kindness. You know, Hajar, when I was in England, I thought the British have natural kindness. You know, they're kind people. Whereas Sini, kita bagi siddhakah. Tapi I think the kindness too is rather superficial. No? Because siddhakah bermakna pahala, kan? All right. So I'm like a, a, a part-time preacher. Okay, <laughs> right. So you have the pakai ketayap lagi, pakai ketayap. They look so innocent, kan? <laughs> they look so innocent and so good, yeah, Tansri? Tansri, so, look at them, so good they look. <laughs> no, no, not business-like at all, but they're very astute business people, all right? Okay. Right, and there is Sharizat so proudly standing with her uncles. All right, there's one more. Uh, uh, so there is this paradox that I mentioned about uh, the, the 
practice of the religion, but they are given great freedom. Kebebasan bergaul, kebe kebebasan memakai. Yeah, the, the ladies dress up, doll up. They may be in their teleko one day, but they'll be dolled up at the next wedding. And extreme, extremity. Kalau sederhana, always doll up like me, it's okay. But ni kadang-kadang macam tu, lepas tu macam ni. So I'm like, I, I get confused, you know, within the, the the family. I'm always confused, you know. Yeah, dia ni macam ni, lepas tu macam ni, you know. So this is the paradox of the upbringing. The mothers give a lot of face to the sons where education is concerned. Kebebasan social juga. But they kongkong anak perempuan ini. Even education, the, the, the girls didn't go up to beyond form three. They stopped at form one, form two, and were married off. Except for Rose. Rosia went on to, the youngest daughter went on to uh, form five and then a secretarial course. But the other sisters were married off at 18, 19. Whereas the boys were given the full range of educational pursuits. So there was gender bias. Tapi in uh, social settings, the girls tersedla because they were beautiful. Yeah? And, uh, to, and so they had confidence, you know, confidence, you know, was there. Although they were not diberi pendidikan yang tinggi, they had very, very positive uh, personalities. Confident, can hold themselves in any crowd because they were like well-dressed and, and pandai check up. Yeah. All right, I'm about to end, but I want to end on a very positive note. Uh, let's see. So lelaki jadi peranakan, and then personality dah sudah dah. And then Minda and Saike, you know, Minda is more of the person, Saike of the community. Uh, Saike. <coughs> sorry. Oh, I'm going up. I'm so sorry. Okay, so look at this, all right? All right, this is Sharizad, her daughter on the right and her niece on the left. So the India Muslim punya, India Muslim and Indian influence. So when Alia uh, was engaged, they had a Mendy, Mendy, and we all dressed up in Indian costume and danced the Mangra like her including me all right that's me that's me there uh fifth from right is me all dolled up and dancing all right so you see there's a mismatch yeah, between the religious fervor the islamic religious fervor and then the gayness gaiety and so on all right uh, so confusing and then of course these are images these are my paintings all right, the Muslim women in her many stances, all right, shy, timid, etc. This is women in general in their many uh, roles, you know, and this is a big statement about women. Look at the top left hand side picture of the man and woman. That's the Jawi Pranakan husband domineering over the wife who resents him but can't do anything about it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Okay. Now go down to the conclusion. All right. Now what I wish to... Okay, satu lagi. What I wish to... Yang saya nak sarankan di sini adalah penyelidikan yang berterusan dan berterusan dari penyampaian hari ini Di mana saya rasa aspek-aspek yang dibincang tadi seperti ciri-ciri personality harus ditinjau dengan lebih mendalam, diselidik dengan lebih mendalam 
Tapi satu lagi uh, saranan yang dikongsi oleh saya pagi tadi oleh Professor Hood, uh, Hood Saleh, dia kata, why don't you do a survey, have a list of questionnaire with ciri-ciri personality yang dikatakan uh, di, di apa, wujud dalam uh, jawi Terima peranakan. Makan and ask them for their self for their assessment yeah. of their self image kita saja yang kata you all macam ni what about you what do you think of yourself i think that's a very good study to do yes yes yeah you yeah. say about and questionnaire yeah. ni and yeah. get people yeah. to assess yeah. their own self image so that's my uh, you know my last words actually yeah. continue the work and let's do more Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alima. You are, you are candid, honest, and bold. Right? Bold. And yeah, and uh, you have represented the Jawa Panakan more than the Jawa Panakan would have represented him or so. <laughs> uh, we, we take a break as, yeah, two minutes. Betul. Now, just now, I was just contemplating. Hadirin sekalian, kita akan berhenti seketika untuk memaparkan kod QR MyCPD. Semua staf USM boleh mengimbas kod QR tersebut. Tanpa melingahkan masa, saya serahkan semula majlis kepada Tuan Moderator untuk meneruskan siri syarahan hari ini. Silakan Prof. Datuk. Alright. Thank you. Uh, we've heard uh, Datuk Alimah, uh, her experience and uh, observation uh, inside, outside uh, on the Japan Akan. Also, uh, I have to mention that Alima is also a painter, an artist. Uh, I would uh, I'll be, uh, you know, uh, be following her developments and uh, many of her works. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, there'll be an exhibition soon. Uh, maybe you can, you can tell the audience. But we have about... Uh, half an hour. Yeah, about, about half an hour. Uh, originally, the time was four because it's really for Kuala Lumpur, but I think I extended to four fifteen. Uh, I'm sure there are many questions, uh, comments, and observations, uh, <coughs> and uh, of course, these things are, are quite contentious too. So, uh, yeah, Professor Wazir, yeah, great. Take the mic. Yeah. Thank you. Is it uh, cordless? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's studying close communities, communities which were very much uh, embedded and encapsulated in a unique culture, uh, in a unique natural habitat, but they couldn't move out. They were like totally... Mm. No. So now when you talk about the Jawi collection, in the modern context, like uh, especially our younger kids, the, the new generation, they've studied overseas, a lot of them are very British, some are more American, and then some are very pro-family, some are very neutral to the family environment. Would you say, from my observation, at least that they are much more cosmopolitan, much more art and world, modern, uh, very uh, oscillatory in the way they deal with other communities, and I would say very sophisticated too, but not very different from the modern Chinese or the modern Indian or or the modern duration. So don't you think we should like add in a concept of modernity in the whole episode of the Jawi Palette? That's one question. The the, the other uh, reflection is that I'm very actually not very sure about the uh, notion of Malayu Tanjo. Because Malayu is an exclusive word for Malays. And Tanjo is a place. Like it's Oran Kelantan, Oran Tengan, that's fine. Because the word aura means people, and it means a multifaceted, composite community of people of many different uh, origins. So you would have the Pata in Kelantan and uh, Orang Tanjung in Penang. You would have the Jawi Pranakan, you have the Arab, the Punjabi Muslims, uh, even Eurasian Muslims. They would be all part of the Jawi Pranakan constellation. So the word Malayu Tanjung actually cannot exist. You cannot actually juxtapose uh, uh, two words, one which is uh, exclusive and one is inclusive. So you have to use, in my opinion, as an anthropologist, I could be wrong, you have to use the word orang tanjo to, uh, to emphasize a composite. Because Malay is the Jawi Pekan, the Mayu Pekan, the Mayu Tanjo, they are part of the whole orang tanjo constellation. Um, yeah. I'll answer the first yeah, question yeah, yeah. and maybe Prof. Murat yeah, can answer the second. The second question, yeah. Right. Now, I agree with this uh, thing about bringing in modernity. I think there are universal characteristics now. Uh, you can see a universal uh, personality among <coughs> the, the young of today, all right, that have uh, trans transgressed or crossed borders and so on. And uh, this is... Uh, a part of the development of the universal man, no longer the pair up man, this man, that man, but the universal man, right? So uh, I do agree that certain uh, concepts, you know, that was uh, peculiar to the Jawi Pranakan when they were considered a special, unique kaum, like uh, crafty, pushy, cunning, and so on, all these are now given modern names like dynamic. When you say a person is dynamic, it could be, you know, from any, a person from any community, all right? Highly motivated is another of those modern terms, yeah? And uh, courageous, courageous can be, you know, I mean, it's an old, you know, word meaning valor, you know, of the people of yesteryear, but to be courageous, to be brave, I think is universal also in its meaning. Yeah? And opportunistic again. Uh, at one time, I think opportunistic, the, the Jai Pranakan were considered opportunistic in a negative sense, which meant, which, uh, meant that they menonjol, you know, they menonjol diri untuk mendapatkan sesuatu. Yeah? They were brash, they pushed themselves forward 
and that's how they were opportunistic. But nowadays, I think opportunistic can be can be used in a very positive sense. That means you take advantage of the opportunity that is before you. But again, if you look at Malay politics, opportunistic is not a, a good word because the political Malay is opportunistic in you know, really exploiting the opportunity and getting maximum profit from it. So I do agree we're heading that way, uh, Prof. Wazir. We're heading that way. Pardon? Yes, motivated is a good word. Initiative, full of initiative. These are all, I think, I, I think the motivational speakers would use these terms these days when they're trying to inspire groups of young people. Yes, Prof. Murad? Yeah, Tanjung. just to, uh, to continue a bit. We, you're right, we cannot uh, deny the, uh, the dimension of modernity and cosmopolitanism. Uh, with regard to the younger generation. When you talk about identities of what we describe as Jai Panakan or Jai Pekan or Arab Panakan, it is not static. Uh, we, we may have, uh, you know, uh, subconsciously uh, referred to uh, the 1800s or 1900s or before World War II and even in the 60s or 70s. But we're talking about uh, the younger generation, our, our, our children. They're different. They don't even know the term, the, the, the instance of the term Jaya Panakan or Jaya Pekan. Uh, my kids, for example, they don't know. They think I'm crazy. So, uh, again, uh, but uh, they, they inherit certain traits or perhaps they inherit certain certain views of thinking. Uh, of course, we're talking here about uh, uh, ethnic uh, inheritance as well as social identity. So, this move on. Okay? Mm. Uh, regardless of uh, 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 time, but uh, again, uh, uh, the the concept and the uh, the uh, reality is not uh, not static. The other one is on the term Melayu uh, Tanjung. I know that this will pose some uh, problems uh, uh, to many. I have used the term Melayu Tanjung over over some years. Melayu uh, Tanjung is meant to be inclusive. Uh, I do not want to use uh, earlier on. I thought of uh, using the term Jawi Pranakan and also Jawi Pekan. But then you have uh, again the Arab Pranakan, uh, and the Arab Pranakan would, would not want to be associated or would, want, would not want to be labeled as uh, Jawi Pranakan or Jawi Pekan. Uh, we ask yeah, uh, individually or collectively. It depends on, on, on the families. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not speaking. I, I'm not an anthropologist. Uh, I'm also not a historian. Okay? I'm not an anthropologist. I don't have your experience. I don't have your intellectual legacy that you have inherited. Uh, I am. Uh, I use different disciplines. Huh? Uh, I have. I have engaged in anthropology and uh, a few other areas. But here, when you talk about Melayu Tanjung, it also includes the Arab Pernakan. It also includes the Malays who are domiciled in, in Tanjung. The Malays who are from uh, Binangkabau, uh, the, uh, the Jawa, uh, many in Sungai Dua, for example, you know, uh, and various other Malay sukus who, who have uh, 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 been a, 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 a part of the Tanjung uh, demographics over the last perhaps more than 200 years. So they will also uh, be part of this Melayu Tanjung. Uh, again, so Melayu Tanjung would be uh, uh, those Malays, Jai Pranakan, Jai Pekan, Diara Pranakan, and those. So we are talking about uh, a region, yeah, the Cape, and, and, and uh, there are no defined limits, but gen pop uh, at the popular level, when you talk about Tanjung, uh, I'm not using any uh, administrative uh, kind of measurement uh, criteria uh, to determine, okay, this is Tanjung. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling out Georgetown from here. I'm looking at Tanjung as a as, as space, as cultural space, perhaps at the borders of Bagan Jerman, not even Tanjung Tokong. To those who are in Sungai Pinang, they will say Tanjung Tokong is Darat. No, this is, uh, you, you cannot say that I'm wrong. I can also say that you're wrong. So they will say that, uh, I mean, my experience in Tanjung, when I was growing up, I was staying in Aitam. To us in Aitam, 
the Tanjung Tokong people are darat. Uh, the Palik Pulau is uh, apa orang apa orang orang kata dah oh whatever. Eh? So the orang Tanjung, no, Aita is the fridge of Tanjung. My father is in the middle of Tanjung. He was born in the the Siang Tik Road area, Irving Road area. Uh, his playground was there. And uh, even when we talk about uh, Glugo, Glugo is the outskirts of Tanjung. Glugo is orang orang luar, orang bukan orang town. So Tanjung here would be, for example, the uh, between uh, Bagan Jerbal, Aitam, and perhaps Jelutong. Uh, that's that's basically what I have in mind. That that Tanjung uh, cultural yeah sphere yeah. Boleh boleh. Robert the Gauss yeah. Oh, I'm going to <laughs> Academy, yeah, but I, I would say that there are certain conventions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. But uh, I'm from Itu cling, itu 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 kita kita cling lah. Ah, ah, bukan jauh, so, bukan. Macam orang kata macam orang darat tu, macam dulu. Yeah, 
Sudah banyak. Oh, dia dia tunggu the body I live in the body of the body. Mami mami yang kat sana. I know my mother knows all of them. We used to uh gather and they have outings together and so on. And most of them speak English from in Georgia. So thank you for, uh, very much uh, taking me back to my yeah. days of my mother's yeah. days, you know. And I hope we can keep it alive to the extent that it becomes more of a cultural heritage legacy that it does not be ensconced in the museum. Like it becomes an organic thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's what uh, the good prof is trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, one, one, yeah, one of the objectives is to uh, uh, to perpetuate this uh, Melayu Tanjung story uh, as against uh, other stories in Pulau Pinang. So I think we had uh, Penang story 2002. There was only no paper. There was no paper on Melayu Pulau Pinang among the 400 papers. I think you were involved. I, I wasn't involved. No papers. So I, I thought that this is one way in which we can continuously narrate the uh, you know notions of uh, identity. Uh, I mean, these are complex and contradictory. Yeah? I, I think you have to move on uh, with regard to, and there there there, there may be more concepts uh, coming up. Uh, you know, along the way, with regard to uh, the emergence of the new generation, and as well as uh, perhaps. Uh, uh, a re retrospective view of uh, you know, the idea of peranakan. I mean, bahasa kasar we call kacokan. Tiba-tiba uh, Bernard in his uh, work on the Malays in South, he, he call he, he term it kacokan. But uh, we, we don't call it kacokan, kacokan is kasar. So we call it peranakan. So again, uh, the word is important for us. Yeah, well, before that, one more sentence I, before I forget. Uh, See, when you talk about peranakan, uh, peranakan and so pekan uh, and, 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 and a level or a different term, it's another, to put it crudely, it's another race. It's another identity altogether. You know, the, the intermarriage between uh, uh, those from other parts, say from the Indian subcontinent or the Arab world to the Malay, creates another race. In other words, here, uh, perhaps uh, we, if we don't want to use the word race, another identity. So when you talk about Melayu Tanjung, I don't really want to use Melayu Tanjung, not Orang Tanjung. Of course, they have, well, I, I consider others, right? they have described Orang Tanjung here and there, and they are, these are uh, different meanings. But uh, Melayu Tanjung as a social identity uh, in Malaysia. Okay? This is what I basically, but of course, things are, can be contested. Yeah. Professor Adia. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, so. Your mic. Oh, no, it's on, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> What's wrong? Um, yeah, I want to say something regarding, you know, you were talking about you as an outsider coming in, your observation about the family, the family. Um, I would like to, first of all, uh, kind of, you know, uh, convey this that happened to me. I am a true Malay. Original. And uh, I'm from the uh, Bukamat, I'm from the state. So the Adima knows my father and also my mother. And uh, when I was I was born in Penang, but I went to Ipo, my family moved to Ipo when I was about six years old. And when I went to school, uh, I met, I had the first Malay friends. I did know Malay people, like orang Melayu, betul lah, dan kita. Kita orang kat Penang, kita ada Melayu lah. Jadi, kita kena ourselves as Melayu. But when I went there, when I went to school, the girls at the school asked me, kau ni Melayu ke? Kau Keling ke? They used to work Keling. I was so confused as a child. I was seven years old. I was so confused as a teacher. And as a child, you kind of reason things in your, in your mind. <clears throat> and I didn't go back to ask anyone. I was just kind of confused. Why did they say that? I am a Malay. I see myself as a Malay. I speak Malay at home. 
So I was very confused. But they were confused as well. <laughs> because they were Malay. Or Melayu. Melayu betul lah. Melayu betul. Tak pun manjur. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 The other thing is, I think Jari Pranakan, or now we use Pranakan, but originally it was Pekan. That was the term used by the British to refer to this mixed identity. Uh, I think, I mean, my observation is that um, what you were talking about with regard to the Mark of Kandy, yes, uh, they, uh, you know, they have the gumption, they have great, and they also had that uh, support. The support is so important, you know. But not everyone had those kinds of. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I also see, uh, but many of them, although uh, they come from uh, families which are not as advantaged, they did well. You know, they still did well. They, you have your your, your 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 thoughts on quick and gumption. I think it's true. Many of them did really really well. Yeah. Mm. And the other thing is about uh, the issue of the younger generation. Now, although. The, the language that we use is quite interesting. It's different. It has certain words and terms that we use in our own 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 that way. Very particular to the job practice. But I noticed that this change in the younger generation where they don't know a lot of words that we, my, my, my grandma and my mother, they use the things that I don't use anymore, but the younger ones are not used to use the kind of words that I don't use and also kinship terms. Kinship terms. Usually we take it on it, okay, ati, nana, okay. But now, many of them are going to use kakra. Or and auntie. Auntie. Yeah, we use uncle and auntie. No more my knee, my knee. My, my knee, yes. <laughs> but now my family, we're like making a conscious uh, effort to make sure that the younger generation call the aunties and uncles mummy so that you keep the uh, you know, the, uh, the language going and it has to be a conscious act yeah yes yes uh, otherwise the, because the malay language is, is so common it's quite dominant yeah that in the world of facts uh, not yeah. just this, group, uh, this particular group but other smaller groups minority groups as well so but i think doing something like this which is uh, what you were thinking uh, about in terms of creating some kind of live museum. Not just museum, but... Yeah, I like museum, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a dead one. Yeah. That's great. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Ambivalence. You know, that's, that's another uh, problematic term. I mean, it, it's, it manifests uh, the problem, the distribution that we have. Uh, and... Uh, Can I just have one small Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, about the younger generation. Yeah. Um, I know... Don't you feel when you talk to them about it, they're curious, they're interested, and they're charmed? Yeah, exactly. They, some of them are even proud to, uh, to be associated with that concept. Don't exactly. You think that there is hope, there is this kind of opportunity. Yeah, thank you for the question. That's uh, a very important one. Uh, one of the things that we're doing now is, is to curate the culture. We curate the culture. Uh, my, my kids, uh, one, uh, my son doesn't care. He knows, but he doesn't care. But my daughter cares. But what's important here, I notice that when we tell stories, occasional stories to our kids, they will listen. They're more interested. So this is, I think, one role that we can play in perpetuating the, I think uh, the, the worldview. Uh, the yeah. other thing is for families to come up with their family narratives. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This will definitely interest the younger generation because they see themselves in it as part of the whole heritage. Exactly. Yes. So, and then to answer Hajar's comment on Hajar's comment about uh, the identification of the AGU so uh, that is purely because I've written this book yes. and I happen. 
there are so many Penang families that are successful. In fact, in the first book, uh, you know, Images of the Jawi Pranakan, we mention all these families, Zanal Abidin, the Arif family, yeah, and then the Hashim family. There's so many other families that are successful. And the young in them, you know, the the, the I think they were they were inspired by the, the the hard work and resilience of their own father in the household, who were second generation Jawi Khan. And their fathers were inspired by their mi migrant fathers. So it works down downwards like that. And if the youngest of the generations know that their forefathers, their ancestors were migrants, I think they would be inspired by the story. You know, it's yeah. nice to know what your grandfather did before and how he has, uh, you know, laid down all these family values and so on for you to emulate. It's good. I think we should do more yeah. of these family narratives. Yeah, 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 exactly. Can, can we go to the online questions? Oh. I think we have a, a, a number of audience uh, online. I'll read through the questions and then just I'll give it to you. No, yeah, just yeah, group you them. Because we, uh, in the interest of time, uh -huh. uh, how many questions do we have? Uh, I see three here. Okay, I'll read out. Huh? Uh, Mamak bendahara yang digunakan semasa era Kesultanan Melaka. Bagaimana pula? Itu soalan pertama. Second question, sebab okay, sebab itu pentingnya sistem pendidikan satu aliran kebangsaan di mana pelbagai kaum dapat bersaing dalam satu sekolah. Seperti mana berlaku di PFS. Komen Datuk. Soalan tiga, pada pendapat saya, ini uh, from Dr. Afsah, uh, former librarian USM, tadi from uh, Surimu, uh, staff from USM juga. Uh, pada pendapat saya, saya... The celebration of dancing in Islam between ladies is allowed in celebrated occasions provided it's among ladies, females. So, taklah contradict dengan prinsip agama. What do you say, Dato? So, I suppose that's only with three questions, yeah. I think I can be very um, ambivalent because I'm not a Jawi Pranakan. You know, so I do not, I cannot represent you all, yeah, except that my paper happens to be on your community. But in general, I think it's true that although Islam does not encourage this open gaiety in dancing and so on, all right, there are the dervish dancers in Turkey who dance among themselves as they chant the prayers, the beautiful, you know, formations and all that. And in the Arab countries, the Middle Eastern countries, the ladies do dance. They dress up in their Christian Dior and their Hermes and all that. And they put on their uh, hijab over it. But once they're among themselves, they, they just throw caution to the wind. So that is allowable. And I think in Malaysia, we no longer have that open dancing, uh, you, know, uh, you know, like we did before. Even the wrong gang where you don't touch each other, we don't have that anymore at social functions. So there is a deep like respect for Islamic principles and a conscious effort not to transgress these principles. All right? Among yourselves, it's okay. Uh, like, uh, you know, dancing the Indian Bangra, Bangra or something like that. Among yourselves, it's perfectly all right. I, I see nothing wrong in that as myself or as a member of the family. Right? Uh, what was the, the other the, point? The about first question on Mama Bandara. I think the word Mama. Mm. This question, they uh, were mama yeah. because I think the sultans of old had this um, uh, Jawi Pranakan or Indian Muslim Saudagaraja. Yeah. A lot of them were Saudagaraja who were go between the, the uh, ruler yeah. and the emissaries that came from Thailand and so on. They were runners, that runners in modern day language. Right, right. And they were the ones who did the work for the Sultan, acquired, uh, you know, the, the Bunga Mas, took the Bunga Mas or whatever else that was offered. So Mama Bendahara, I think because they were proficient in language and communication, I think that that is a very important characteristic of the Jawi Pranakan. Yeah, agile and... Uh, Agi uh, mentally, uh, uh, mentally, because yeah. they were well educated, yeah, whether, yeah. whether in Islam, is uh, the Islamic religion, or in academic subjects. Yeah. They went to PFS, so they were well educated and they communicated well. So the British took them in as government servants. 
the, there's a question uh, on PFS. Uh, PFS, uh, uh, what, what's going to be? The question again? is, do you have to give one aliran to the nation? I think uh, like this, PFS. this is a much, <laughs> much upper. This question is asked everywhere. We should revert to one system and use English. No, 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 it will never happen. We'll never have English education as it was before. Because there is this commitment to have an, uh, an education where Bahasa uh, Malaysia is the medium of instruction in order to allow for the growth of our national language. Why do we want to bring back English? What I propose, or I've been talking about it for, for years, is that English and Malay and the other you know, vernacular language be developed almost in tandem with one another, especially English and Malay. And I don't think the Prime Minister is wrong in suggesting that we speak uh, Bahasa Malaysia at international forums, provided we have a trained, uh, we have a school of translation, school of interpretation to train proficient translators, bilingual translators, who are truly bilingual in both languages, not just half past six in Malay, half past six in English, and then they get all convoluted in their translation. I think that is what Japan has achieved and France has achieved. They have a proficient group of bilingual translators. That's what we must aim for. So the two languages are allowed to complement each other's development and grow at the same time. In fact, then English would borrow more words from Bahasa Malaysia. Is that one wonderful? Yeah. Apart from Amok, Amok, Amok. And now, <laughs> apart from Amok, there are one or two other Malay words that have been absorbed into the Oxford Dictionary. Yeah? Kampung. 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 But too slow yeah, in absorbing uh, Malay loan words. Yeah. Also because Kampung. we don't have the international exposure. Yeah. Imagine if uh, Malay was brought to the UN and other international forums, European forums and so on, they would be wondering, uh, what word did that fellow use? What word did the Prime Minister use? Not Burberry, for goodness sake. You know, the Prime Minister wore a Burberry shirt, but that's not <laughs> something that, you know, we want to learn. Yeah? It's $5,000, right? Yeah. So... I think this, this will encourage the growth of both languages. And within Malaysia, the interpretation, translation of Malay with the local, other local languages. I think that's what is dynamism in development, you know, language, language development. Yeah. Not yeah. simply, you know, uh, have English medium, bring back English medium. It will never happen because there'll be riots. The Chinese and Indians will riot if you abolish vernacular schools. Definitely. All right, all right. Sorry, I'm yeah. calling for it. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, thank you very much, <laughs> Dato' Alimah. It's always a pleasure listening to Dato'. Uh, very... uh, maybe one, one more. One yeah. more. Want to ask? Last one. Please. Uh, she's my other half, so I cannot yes, say no. Yes, you cannot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right, that's uh, personal, but I will answer it. I'm never, I'm very open. There's nothing to hide. Now, before I actually, um, you know, married Zain, you know, I was very close, or rather, I was befriended by his, uh, his husband's, uh, his brother's wife, who's uh, orang, orang, as, orang, apa tu? Melayu asli from Penang, yeah? Uh, one time was her name, yeah? and she had briefed me a little about the intricacies of this family, you know, the sisters in the family, where, wherever there are sisters uh, and sisters-in-law, there's always some kind of underlying unhappiness, you know. Is it rivalry or is it jealousy? So when there are more women amongst them, there's this underlying, like, flurry, 
all right so she had warned me you know or, you know because she didn't get along with them so she warned me about this phenomenon but i was very open and and rather confident because i came from a proper background bukanlah hafa six yeah bukanlah orang yang you know sometimes when you marry into the family and they think they can bully you they will but i think i had the advantage of being the daughter of an ex menteri besar so there was a gun there's a gun when they first met my family pun dah notice there's a gun tak beranilah you know and uh, and so i was protected from that kind of scrutiny but that didn't stop some members of the family from chamdek chamdek sarcasm yeah uh, they go yeah, you yeah. you know mm. awak macam ni awak tak pakai barang uh, nak keluar pergi kedai mas pun nak beli apa ke nak pakai barang pula awak cik ni tak pakai barang awak uh, lipstick tak merah you know that kind of thing so i i stood it all i because i i'm so like you know open i was fair of skin that was a great advantage that was my winning point you know sebab halima putih halima putih dia pun tak berani nak usik tau because i would turn around and say awak cik wan gelap Acicah putih, ros putih, awak Cik Wan dengan Cik Rahmah gelap. Huh? So they wouldn't dare ask me because I would retaliate. I would retaliate. Because uh, I think I did not suffer fools even from those days. So tak berani lah. Uh, my mother-in-law, we got along well superficially. All right, superficially. Uh, because i knew that she belonged to the older generation and so on and she really loved doted on her um on her sons including zain so uh, i would not like interfere with their intimacy lah you know so i was polite i was polite yeah all right thank you thank you that's it uh, thank right. you very much thanks so uh, much uh, everyone yeah thank you enjoy it's that always a pleasure Uh, anyway, ya, dah dah habis ke? Uh, belum, masih. Belum, oh. Masih lagi. Okay. Belum, belum, belum habis lagi. So uh, we thank uh, everyone here for the uh, effort untuk makluman hadirin pameran maya secara penuh. To perpetuate the dialogue and understanding of uh, social identities in Pulau Pinang and Tanjung. We thank our audience online for the questions and also the questions here. Uh, we'll have more sessions like this, uh, either online or on-site. I think we we have a, a few on-sites uh, in in this place uh, in future. Uh, we thank, of course, uh, Dr. Alima for her time. Uh, we really appreciate it uh, and uh, your sharing of uh, the great encumption of uh, a family and uh, the group or the kaum. Jadi <laughs> pernahkan. Uh, before I end, I, I, I like to recall this uh, this phrase used in the Surat Kabar, Jawil Puan Akan, uh, 1876 to 1896, uh, 20 years. My favorite newspaper. Uh, in Jawil Puan Akan, there will always be a phrase. Kita semua orang Melayu. Yeah. And so at that time, the Jawil Puan Akan started in Singapore, but editor was from Penang. Uh, they conceive themselves as Melayu. Although, you know, because in the historiography and history of uh, Malay journalism, the Malay Sarjanas, Sarjana Sarjana Melayu di Malaysia, huh? uh, in the universities that we know, they will suppress that period between 1876 to World War II on the uh, existence of Malay newspapers. Because to them, uh, uh, they, they would gloss over, they say, uh, they would not mention that the newspapers and journalism that was operated between that period, 1876 to World War II, were by the Jawa Panakan and the Arab Panakan. There were no Malay newspapers until 1938-1939. But it's not, it's not visible in the historiography of the history of Malay journalism in Malaysia. So I, this is one, one thing which I want to highlight. That if you look at newspapers in Pulau Pinang, in Perak, in Melaka, in 
apart from Singapore, uh, KL, Negeri Sembilan, uh, Johor, they are operated by the Arab and, and funded by the Arab and the Jawapan Akan. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we'll meet again and thank you uh, to everybody. Yeah. <laughs>